It might not be the same, but that's not important. 705 now, Jimmy Baird News Radio 1140 WRVA 98.5 FM. No doubt the Supreme Court decision this week. Big victory for the LGBT community as far as same sex marriage. But there are plenty members of this community who don't think that we're just equal yet. Not just based on that. Angela Giampolo joins us, an attorney who operates phillygaylawyer.com. So where are we still falling short in your eyes, Angela? Well, I mean, you know, like I tell my clients all the time, full equality does not equal full acceptance. And we don't even have full equality at the moment, but... You're absolutely right. Even as we gain more rights, that doesn't mean that people accept us. Well, you can't force people to accept you, can you? No, that's not what I'm asking for. I'm just being honest. I'm saying full equality yeah. doesn't equal full acceptance. I mean, there's some place in this country where I wouldn't be allowed to vote and black people would still be free. So I'm not expecting that overnight homophobia is going to go away. That's based in fear and ignorance. Well, so, no. it's also based on religion. For some and people, fear and that, ignorance. Well, right, so I mean, you know, so you're saying religion I'll, is I'll ignorance? Quote, I'll quote the Bible. I'll quote the Bible, okay. you, my friend. One Corinthians thirteen. Of these three, faith, hope, and love. The greatest of these is love. And what's our hashtag? And what so- what song did you just play leading into me? Our hashtag is love wins. So please, between faith, hope, and love, the greatest of these is love. If you truly religiously have an issue, ban divorce. Ban divorce. Don't ban other loving people. Don't. Why are you mad about exponentializing the love in the world? Let's let more people love each other. Come on. Yeah. I mean, I, if that, that, that's you know, like, the only reason, the only reason, and, and here's the thing. I mean, you're not going to change certain people's minds. I'm not going to change certain people's minds either. And and as long as there are religions who teach this, it may you may not agree with what they're teaching. I might not agree with what they're teaching. In fact, I don't. But the fact of the matter is they have the right to believe that way. And I guess where the the people, religious people have a concern, as you know, Angela, is, is how far does this go as far as trying to force acceptance? Well, but let me, and let me, just again stop you there in terms of the one thing I never do is talk to protesters or try to convince someone. I'm Canadian. I come from a long line of straight people that never got married because we didn't in Canada tie 1,138 state and federal rights to marriage. If they really wanted marriage to be a religious institution, they shouldn't have mucked it up. They should have left it as such. But the minute you attach 1,138 federal state rights and, and benefits to something, then automatically you no longer have the right to deny a group of people access to said rights and benefits. So in this country, unfortunately, marriage is no longer simply a religious institution. And to your point, I think what you're getting is on Friday I was given a newly minted constitutional right that on Thursday I didn't have. I have a 14th Amendment right to be able to get married because of these 1,138 rights. You can't deny me them. But no. where does my first, where does my Fourteenth Amendment right end and begin, and where does Rick Santorum and Ted Cruz's First Amendment right begin and end? And that's never been litigated. But in my opinion, it stays at home and it stays in your church and it stays in your synagogue. Hence, the separation of church and state. You better sell me a wedding gown. You better sell me a wedding cake. But you can eat me while doing it. But at some point, there needs to be a dividing line of where you exercise said. First Amendment right. And I think most reasonable people, Angela, would probably be fine as long as, as long as, let's say you're a minister of a particular denomination, as long as we're not saying that you have to perform gay marriages to those people who have religious objections, uh, again, I again, think we're good. That makes no sense. For years, a friend of mine is, is Jewish, uh, on the board of the, the National Jewish American Museum, and he married a black woman. It took them years to find a rabbi that would do an interfaith, an interfaith wedding. We have not been forcing religious people to, ministers especially, or churches, to do what they don't want to do. Right. So all this, and, and quite frankly, we don't get married in churches, we get married in castles. All right? I don't know a gay person who would want to get married in a church. So we won't bother you, you don't bother us. But no, for years, years, rabbis, priests, ministers have never been forced to do anything. Even though Loving v. Virginia allowed interracial marriages, people of the faith didn't have to abide by it. So that's never been done in the past, and it's not going to happen now. All right, Angela, thanks for your time. She operates at phillygaylawyer.com. Angela Giampolo joining us here on News Radio 1140 WRBA 98.5 FM. All right, not sure if we ever got past gay marriage, did we?